Welcome to Informatica Video Support. My name is Sita Kant Pradhan. I work as a product specialist in Global Customer Support Division of Informatica. In today's video, I will be talking about parser and how to create a parser in B2B data transformation. Here is the agenda of today's video. First, I will be talking about the types of B2B data transformation then I will be talking about the parser, how to develop a parser and the components of a parser followed by a demo. So what are the types of B2B data transformation? B2B data transformation provides three types of transformation. The first one is parser, mapper and the serializer. Parser converts an input of any format XML format. Mapper converts from one format of XML to another format of XML. Serializer converts XML input to any other formats. In today's topic, I will be talking about parser, which converts any format to XML format. We have two other components as well, that is streamer and XML streamer. Streamer is useful when the input file is very huge. Basically, it splits the data into small chunks and send the small chunks to the above three transformation to do the real parsing. Similarly, we have XML streamer, which is equivalent to streamer, but here the input is XML data. Now moving to demo. First, I will tell you about how to develop a parser. So let's go to the B2B Data Transformation Studio where we develop a DT project. So this is the B2B Data Transformation Studio. We can create a parser project using file, new and project. Here you can see there is a parser option here you can click the parser option which will basically create a parser project otherwise you can go here as well in the wizard you can see under data transformation we have different kind of project so you can select a blank project or a parser project if you select a blank project you have the option to create any kind of transformation so now here you need to give a project name Once you created the project, this will be seen in the workspace. Now you will have a script named with the project name. So you have video parser.tgp. Now here the first thing you need to do is you have to give a name to the parser project. Let's say I am giving the name as my first parser. Now here you have option to create a parser, mapper or serializer or streamer. So you choose the option as parser here. As you create it, the first the visible option is example source. Example source is the input to the parser. While you develop a parser project, you can mention the example source according which you will you will define or develop the DT projects. In the example source field, you will have four options. One is the input port, local file, text and URL. Input port is useful when you are reading from an additional input port. Local file is used when you are reading from a local file system. Text is used when you want to give the content of the input in the studio itself. URL is deprecated now but it is still supported for the older version. You can give the URL name from where it can download and parse the data. 
so for now we can mention as a text now you can see format format is used to un for DT to understand the format of the data that you are using so there are there are different kind of format already available like if you are if you are expecting the input file is binary you can mention as a binary format similarly you can create your own format like you have your own input file and you know that the format is something like it is containing a new line or it is containing a semicolon you can define accordingly similarly we have html format rta format text format and xml format under under example source if you expand this you will be seeing code because we mentioned here text so under code you can mention whatever the input file you are going to parse okay and you will be seeing another subfield name as preprocessor preprocessor is is a field which helps us to pre-process the data before it is really getting processed if you have buy the license or install the preprocessor component you will be seeing all these preprocessor that is provided by the B2B data transformation let's take example of XML to Excel or Excel to XML so when your input is Excel and it is difficult to parse an excel file so b2b data transformation provides excel to xml preprocessor using which you can convert the excel to a xml format once you did this the input that is given to the dt engine is not excel but a formatted excel to xml input file so you the input provided to dt engine is xml similarly there are lots of like say PDF to text the PDF is a binary file which, which the DT cannot understand or neither you can develop a DT project using the binary file so you need to get the corresponding text file so that you can easily put a marker or content so this preprocessor is useful when when you are dealing with binary input file or the input file which is not understood by the DT easily okay so for now we will be ignore the preprocessor part because we are going to develop a very sample project similarly if you expand this we have few other field like reject recurring pages let's say you are you are reading from a URL and in the URL itself the it is referring to the same page again which is already processed so if you want if you don't want to process the same input file multiple time you can enable this field so that it will not process the same page multiple time one more field is no initial phase when you enable this if you have any any anchors or actions which is mentioned as initial phase they will be ignored in format when you say custom format we have three fields we have one delimiters where you can mention what is the delimiters between the contents one is preprocessor here also you can use the existing preprocessor that is provided like HTML preprocessor or TA processor similarly you can pro you can use a transformer inside the format so these are the transformer that is provided by the b2b transformation if you have a custom transformation that you have already developed you can use them here as well so that is about the format now the next field is source to extract source to extract is useful when you want to deal with multiple input file as you could see in example source we can mention the input file but if you want to not to read from the example source 
and to read from another input file you can mention the port name here the next field is serialization mode when as I told you parser converts from any format to XML whereas a serializer converts from XML to any format so serializer, serializer is just the opposite of a parser so if you want to create a serializer from your parser this this is very useful when you say serialization mode is full it will con it will be storing the unmarked text in the parser code and it will be used while creating the serializer so we have two options here full and outline full is used to mark the unmarked text similarly underneath we have a name name is used to name the parser remark you can give any remark on file is useful when when you want to log the error in case of any failure similarly we have example source where you if you are invoking a parser from another parser and you want to use uh, use the um, data you can use the example source similarly we have a source where you can define the locator key and same is applicable to target as well notification useful when you are when you want to notify some error or user log when there is a failure now coming to the how to develop a parser so here you can do a content or you can create a marker that will mark okay after markets you can do a content okay you can do an open example source to say name okay you can see whatever you are passing here you can see in the example pen now you can put a insert marker okay so it will be putting here similarly you can put a content here to create the content you can remove the content now you can set is a startup component now if you run this the output is nothing because we are not assigning the data holder to anything so as I told you you have to develop a schema for the output XML that will be storing the data but if you don't have a schema you can create a variable by yourself now you can see the variable var1 and the value is containing sk so if you want to save this value in your own schema you can create your own schema and store the value in the xpath and you can use write value to write the result file I hope uh, this is useful you you can see there are so many actions transformation available you can use them according to the requirement I hope uh, this is uh, useful and and I have already covered that components of parser in the demo uh, we would love to hear you from you in support videos at the rate informatica.com and you can tweet us also in the twitter.com info support